buckly. This was just a root tip. No flap was reflected and the root is removed intact. We move on to the canine. Again, the beak is placed in the lingual sulcus and the tooth is easily rotated out. I then repurchase the tooth, placing the bumper on the crown in order to remove the teeth more occlusally to avoid any damage to the buccal plate. You can see it's a very small movement that is achieved with the physics forceps to disengage it from the socket. Once this small movement is accomplished and the tooth has been disengaged, then the forcep is repositioned. The bumper is placed on the crown and the tooth is removed occlusally. You could also put the physics forcep down and use a rongeur or a hemostat or your fingers to remove the tooth. This tooth came out quickly in one piece with one movement. What we don't want is to move the tooth buccally if there's any resistance because that is what can cause a fracture to the buccal plate. This tooth, this canine, is the one that has been endodontically treated. It has a crown and a post in it. You can see with that small movement, the tooth was disengaged from the socket, and then it is elevated occlu occlusally in order to be removed. Again, the beak is set deep in the lingual sulcus, the bumper low on the alveolar ridge at the mucogingival junction. Small movement, and then the tooth is removed occlusally. Large carious restoration. This full mouth extraction consisting of nine lower teeth was accomplished in approximately four minutes. The buccal plate is completely intact and the patient is very comfortable. This patient is a 54-year-old African-American female who presents for extraction of teeth numbers 3 and 5. First, I am separating the gingival attachment from the tooth using a periosteal elevator. Using the physics forcep, I place the beak deep into the palatal sulcus of the tooth until I secure a good purchase point. The bumper then goes at the mucogingival junction and with a small movement the tooth is disengaged from the socket. The bumper is then placed on the crown in order to remove the tooth occlusally to prevent any damage to the buccal plate. Now this next tooth, tooth number five, we can see is broken at the gum line. It's barely visible except from the occlusal. The beak is pushed deep into the palatal sulcus. A secure purchase point is obtained and the bumper is placed at the mucogingival junction. With a slow rotational movement towards the bumper, the tooth is rotated until it is disengaged from the socket. Now with this tooth I can't put the bumper on the crown since there is no crown, so I grab a rongeur and take the tooth out occlusally, preventing any damage to the buccal plate. Here we see this root is taken out in its entirety with no damage to the buccal bone without
Hi, I'm Dr. Helena Perez. Um, I have been in the dental field since 1981. I went to University of Michigan Dental Hygiene School, and I then went to University of Texas Health Science Center to complete my degree in dentistry, and I went straight through to the oral and maxillofacial surgery residency. I came back to Michigan to be with my family, and um, I heard about Dr. Richard Golden. Um, I had sustained an injury to my shoulder, so I had not been practicing dentistry for the past couple years, but I knew that he had um, developed this instrument to make extractions easier, and I thought I may be able to help him in the development of the instrument. Um, I didn't realize at the time that I was going to actually be able to use the instrument because it made dental extractions so easy. So um, I met him, and he told me about his instrument, and I wanted to learn more about it. I was actually a bit skeptical because it was a completely different uh, way of removing teeth than what I had been taught. So, of course, I was skeptical about it because I'd been doing extractions for so long. Um, but as soon as I started using it, I knew there was something to this because the whole extraction process went so much easier and the patients were so much happier that I had to keep doing it and I had to try to force myself to not try to overdo the extraction process because to me, you know, difficult extractions are a surgical procedure that require incisions, um, cutting, and a lot lengthier and a lot more traumatic. So to me, this process just seemed a little bit too good to be true. But after using it, just uh, the first day I used it, I realized that it was very possible and uh, it was very beneficial to both the doctor and the patient. Traditional way that we've taken out teeth in the past is to um, cut the connective tissue attachment and sulcus of a tooth. Take an elevator that is a blade of maybe three, four millimeters. Put it into the sulcus and rotate it, trying to use the lever of three millimeters up against the bone and tooth to be able to leverage it to increase the mobility next to the tooth. Well, a three millimeter lever is not very effective. If we look at the advantage of this particular instrument, is it takes the length of the handle and turns it into the length of a lever. And class one levers have been around since Archimedes. Give me a lever and a place to stand with a fulcrum and I can move the earth. Well, the fulcrum is built in on one part of this forcep. And the, then the handle becomes the length of a lever. So whatever force you apply is being magnified by 20 times rather than with an elevator magnifying just a couple millimeters. There's a huge difference between the two. And as a consequence then, it's, it takes away the, the risk that you can fracture bone around the area, it decreases the time, it decreases the anxiety of the patient relative to the procedure, and it's uh, very effective when it comes to removing roots. Uh, we, you can remove a cuspid if you can get the peak beak on the lingual aspect of the tooth just a couple millimeters. With just a few moments of constant pressure, the tooth then will disengage from the surrounding bone. And it is just mechanics, class one lever mechanics.